I'm holding in my hand a brand new CD by a young man who is really, really dedicated to the cause of Christ and to music. The title of this CD is Introducing Rob J. Crucified. And I'm sitting here today in the sanctuary of the Mount Pisgah Baptist Church in Flint, Michigan with my friend Rob J. Welcome to Heart to Heart. One, Thank you. Two, yes. three, There's so many artists that don't work out of a home church base or they don't attend the home church. And we're sitting in your church home, the Mount Pisgah Baptist Church here in Flint, Michigan. Mm -hmm. How does that feel to be sitting in your home church doing your interview? It feels great. Um, this is where I wanted to do the interview. Um, this is actually for Crucify, uh, my first televised interview. And I, I talked to my pastor about it. Um, um, for those who don't know who my pastor is, his name is Wallace Hill III. And um, I said, Pastor, I really want to do my first interview for this project um, here. And he's like, just come on in and, and do it. Now, this is not your first time at the rodeo. Um, this is not your first recording. No. You've been doing music for the majority of your life. Give us a little bit of your background of your history in music. Well, the first uh, CD that I um, ever done was an R&B CD. It was entitled Fever. Um, and it's what I call good uh, R&B soul music. It was nothing raunchy or anything like that. Um, and um, from that, um, spawned several different things as far as being offered contracts and different stuff. Um, but in the process of doing Fever, um, I got sick. And I was diagnosed with a rare form of diabetes. Um, and I actually spent six days in intensive care and I literally was going to check out of here. And uh, on about the fifth day of being in intensive care, I prayed and uh, it was a sincere prayer. It was not one of those prayers where you can be nice and polite and different stuff. It was one of them prayers because I was in serious pain physically. Um, and the minute that I said, uh, you know, God, whatever it is you want me to do, I do it. Whatever it is, just please remove this pain because the pain was just unbearable. Literally, my system started working again, literally, that, at the very moment that I said that. And uh, after I got up in intensive care um, from that, you know, the, still the other CD fever was out there. Um, I was offered a, a million dollar contract to continue on um, in that style of music, but they wanted me to do more of what I call raunchy um, R&B, and that just was not me. And after God had healed me and I had already made my commitment to Christ that whatever it is he wanted me to do, I would do One of the things that I, I found interesting was one of the reviews said that your music was a mixture of R&B, hip hop, gospel, reggae, I mean, it was, uh, the review was very, very outstanding. Mm -hmm. What is the method behind the man? What, what, what is your inspiration when you write? What? Usually I come from a personal experience um, when I'm writing. It depends, it could be uh, something that a friend may be going through um, or something that I'm going through. I try to write to where people are going to be able to relate to the songs themselves on a personal level. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not a traditional um, gospel singer or producer or writer. Um, I like to shock people into a relationship with Christ. I like to let people know that it's okay to have fun because you, you say, but it's still okay to have fun. It's okay to dance and different stuff and, you know, everything in, in decent and order. I'm not talking about, you know, up here shaking this and shaking that, but it's still okay to be cool with Christ and you're going to, I'm trying to reach a young audience. So in order to reach that young audience, I sometimes have to go to where they're at music wise. The message is always about Christ. It's putting Christ out there on a little bit of a different bait to reel them in so that then once I get them in and pique their interest, then I'm able to minister to them to say that, you know, being saved is cool. It, it's, it's a good feeling to be saved and you can have fun and rejoice in Christ and still be saved. 
Recently, you received an honor that was second to none. You featured on the cover mm -hmm. of a national magazine. Tell us about that and how that feels. Surprising sometimes <laughs> because, you know, I, I'm a very humble person and I always, I pray to God to, to keep me humble no matter what level that he moves me to. Humility is something that I think you should always have um, because you just don't want to get the big head because God may be using me, but he can use anybody. He could take, right. he could take some drug dealer, some prostitute or whatever out on the street and bring them in and they could, I'll sing, I'll do me just as well. So it's a privilege for God to be able to use me. So I'm, I'm really, I'm honored by it. I was surprised by it. I knew that it was coming because I, I sat down and did the interview, but when it actually came out and and I seen it and I, you know I, I read the the interview um you know and um she covered a lot of bases in that interview as far as like um my relationship with Christ my relationship with my wife uh, my two kids um it, it's a, it's very important to me and I was even surprised that she even featured it's a song on the new CD um entitled Eternal Love and it's a love song, and it's a song that I wrote to my wife. And um, she actually got in depth and covered the fact that, you know, my feelings about uh, love songs is that God created man and woman. And some people feel like when you're a Christian artist that you can't do those type of songs. But the song is talking about eternal love. It's talking about a love between a husband and wife. It's talking about that love coming from God. That's in the Bible. You know, you can't skate around that. So I was just surprised that she was so in depth with it. And she really covered a lot of stuff. And you know, she yeah, um, she's going to be at my CD release party. You know, she's coming out. Um, that's going to be on February the 21st um, at the American um, Hotel in, in Flint. Corporate program manager. I walked in one day and it's like the position is being eliminated. You know, and you're talking about somebody that was six figures. You know, it's rough. <laughs> um, but I know that all of this stuff with the job and losing the job, it all, it all happened for a reason. Because even the contract with uh, Tate, with the company where I'm at right now, had I have not lost my day job, I would not have the record contract that I have right now because. I would. I always sung and I always wrote and, and all of that different stuff. But you know, it was a part-time thing, and it's like the Lord is saying He wants me to do more on a full-time basis. So, literally, a couple of days after losing my job, I was at home on the computer, and I just was searching for jobs. And this thing came up about submitting demos and different stuff. So I was like, oh, whatever. You know, I, I sent the MP3 whatever in, and about a month later, you know, they were calling me and. FedEx and contracts and different stuff out and so I say that you know everything happens for a reason because had I have not lost that job I would not have been on the computer at that time didn't know anything about submitting anything in and you know, it all happened for the, for the better now I'm able to do more for Christ.